A very good day to you. I'm Hank Gross, MidHudsonNews.com. It's Wednesday, July 27th. The news today brought to you by the Galleria at Crystal Run. Three African-American former administrators in the enlarged Middletown City School District have filed a federal lawsuit against the district and its superintendent, Amy Creedon. Omar Perez, Catherine Yaya Whaley Williams, and her husband, Anthony Williams, allege the district engaged in systematic retaliation in violation of their First Amendment rights to free speech and association and racial discrimination in violation of their right as guaranteed by the 14th Amendment to equal protection of the laws. Their attorney is Michael Sussman of Goshen. These three have spoken out about racism in the school district. Mr. Perez spoke out about the district's failure to protect women, both staff and students, from sexual assault. And the school district has apparently made the decision that they no longer want to have these three highly talented and young African-American people working there. The suit is seeking both punitive and compensatory damages against the district and enter equitable relief to reverse and or annul the retaliatory and discriminatory decisions. A school district spokesman could not be reached for comment about the suit. The June 2022 unemployment rate for the Hudson Valley region is 3.1 percent. That's up from 2.9 percent in May and down from 5.1 percent in June 2021. In Orange County, the unemployment rate in June was 3.2 percent, as opposed to 3 percent in May and 5.2 percent in June. In Sullivan County, it was 3 percent in June, as well as in May and 5.2 percent in June of 2021. The Middletown Police Department will be hiring a full-time community caseworker to assist officers in cases dealing with people with special needs. The pilot program will be funded by a $75,000 grant secured by State Senator James Scoofus, who came to Middletown on Tuesday to make the announcement. With a population of 30,000, Mayor Joseph DiStefano noted the city has a special needs population and the coordinator will be able to assist them. Police Bureau Commander Lieutenant Jeffrey Tholen said officers are expected to handle all sorts of issues, but the community outreach coordinator will be a specialist in the field. That person is going to work very closely with our officers to provide the bridge that connects individuals with some of the auxiliary services and highly specialized organizations that are available in the Hudson Valley region right now. The caseworker will be lending support to persons with mental health, domestic violence, and other issues that warrant care from specialized agencies. More news right after this. Find over 100 retailers allowing you to spend hours shopping safely at the Galleria at Crystal Run. Enjoy the big brands and the diverse selection of family-owned stores all in one location. The Galleria at Crystal Run offers dining options for everyone with Fuji 110 Grill, Allen's Mediterranean Grill, and Peru Cuisine. Discover the Mid-Hudson Valley's premier shopping, dining, and entertainment destination, the Galleria at Crystal Run. For more information, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or visit GalleriaCrystalRun.com. About a dozen years ago, officials floated the idea of building a spur off the west of Hudson Metro North Railroad in Salisbury Mills directly into New York Stewart International Airport. That never got any traction because of the projected millions of dollars it would cost. It may be back on track as is being discussed by the MTA, says Harry Poor, Deputy Orange County Executive, who represents the county on the Stewart Airport Commission and the MTA board. Last week I met with the MTA Infrastructure Planning Group and they are looking at everything for future development on the west, the so-called West of Hudson service. And included in that is what they call transit access uh, to Stewart Airport. It's believed that a rail link from the airport to New York City would be a major asset for Stewart. The new school year may not start for another month, but Middletown Superintendent Amy Creedon has laid down the law. Cell phones must be turned off and put away during the school day. In a memo to the community, she said students will not have access to their cell phones during the school day, including during study hall and lunch periods, and phones will be prohibited in a classroom 
where a test is being administered. The superintendent said students will be able to use their phones only prior to the beginning of the school day and for after-school activities. The town of Hyde Park Police Department introduced their new K-9 on Tuesday. The nearly two-year-old Slovakian shepherd, Urso, and his handler, Officer Alec Brandau, recently completed the Dutchess County Sheriff's K-9 Academy, which is a 14-week certification program for the dog and its human partner. Hyde Park has not had a K-9 since Sergeant William Truitt retired 12 years ago. Chief Robert Benson says Urso is part of the community and not just a police dog. It's not a dog that's going to ride around in a car and people see a sign and say, oh, that's a dog. He's, he's going to be out in the community at different events and he'll be at Hyde Park Community Day and he'll be available for anybody that wants to have us come and do a demonstration or come and meet the dog at the different daycares or schools or anything in the community the library. Brendan and Urso are currently operating out of a repurposed Hyde Park police SUV with borrowed equipment from the Dutchess County Sheriff's Office. MidHudsonNews.com. Two of State Senator Michelle Hinchy's bills to help New York's growing farm breweries and craft distilleries were signed into law by the governor. One bill establishes parity between distilleries and all other alcoholic beverage manufacturers in New York regarding certain tasting and retail privileges. Another bill maintains farm brewery beer labeling requirements through 2028. I'm Hank Gross, MidHudsonNews.com. The news today brought to you by the Galleria at Crystal Run.